Hello students, welcome to study IQ. In the previous session, we have talked about uh, the period 1773 to 1785. So we have reached up to 1785. We have discussed about Lord Warren Hastings and the problems he faced. We have talked about regulating act of 1773, the provisions with respect to that act. We have talked about Pitts India Act of 1784, okay? And then we have discussed various other facts which are connected to Lord Warren Hastings. Now in this session, what I'm going to do is I'll be discussing from this period 1786 to 1793. So this is uh, during the time of Lord Cornwallis, okay? So we will be talking about Lord Cornwallis okay now i hope you know about lord cornwallis already so he is actually the second governor general after lord baron hastings now apart from that if you talk about lord cornwallis he was a person who was leading the battle from english side in the american war of independence okay so during this time 1776 to 1781 during this period he was leading the battle from english side against the Americans and in the American War of Independence and what I want to tell you is the interesting part here is the person who was a failure when it came to that war when he came to India he have a big success story to write for example we will always get a question that the reforms introduced by Lord Cornwallis that itself will tell you he made certain reforms and it is still relevant like judicial reforms that he introduced uh, for example when we talk about equality before law rule of law all these concepts even now we are following right exactly the same as what we are following first time equality before law is actually introduced by lord cornwallis rule of law introduced by lord cornwallis police system police reforms introduced by lord cornwallis and what more civil service is actually introduced by lord cornwallis and why that's the reason why we are also talking we are meeting right you are you all are preparing for civil service and it's actually introduced by lord cornwallis so we, what we will see is uh, we will first see that reforms introduced by lord cornwallis and apart from that what are the other events also we will see during his time okay so let's start with the uh, uh, civil service reforms so first point he introduced civil services so civil service reforms and uh, he is known as the father of indian civil service so this was actually directly asked as a question in 2013 prelims the father of civil service lord cornwallis okay so he introduced civil service but uh, in the year 1793 so you can see most of the reforms are actually in the year 1793 that is his last year although he is coming back to india later for few months but this is actually considered as lord cornwallis period in the second time uh, there is nothing much to discuss and we won't even discuss also that time few months only so 1793 he introduced civil service but understand uh, this is not based on you know uh, any open competitive exam it is not for indians okay so when we discuss about 1833 charter act i'll tell you a point that uh, through this uh, indians can enter into civil services there was a provision in 1833 charter act that no discrimination should be made in the recruitment of civil services on the basis of sex color creed place of birth etc so technically indians can enter into civil service after that but then what happened and all we will discuss when we discuss with the history okay so 1833 uh, charter act we will discuss this uh, later in fact i have done this discussion already in one of our previous videos but this is again i am uh, revisiting all those things that we have done since we have some more time for prelims right i was expecting prelims on may 31st and we have already done almost all history part so we are repeating for those who missed it out okay so so this is not for indians and it is for uh, english only and the exam will be held in england so all those are you know points so that's about civil service reform nothing much to discuss here so second one police reforms police reforms okay so so 
so so he introduced police reforms in parts where the british had established their total control in india now before that if you remember when we discussed about quinquennial settlement i've told you many people aspire to become zamindars because they enjoy the power of policing so till then zamindars were enjoying the power of policing but now uh, organized setup was established that means police reforms okay so police system or police stations were established police officials were appointed the head of police stations became daroga okay so all these is what we need to discuss here so zamindars earlier were uh, you know now lost the power of policing so police stations police stations were set up okay and police officials were appointed police officials appointed so this is for the first time formally police officials were appointed police stations were established etc so here if you see the way they can ask you questions let's suppose these are two main points that you need to know but even from here i can make you a difficult question which you may not be able to answer so let's suppose this is the first statement police stations established second statement police officials appointed now you can say statement 1 and 2 are correct right so let's suppose your options is one only b two only c one and two d not one not two so now you can say c is the answer but if i add a word here in the first option police stations were established on the basis of on the basis of population so if i am saying police stations were established on the basis of population now what do you say you if you need to answer this question you have to read between the lines right so whether it is based on population or not you should have a clear idea otherwise generally you know what will happen i'll tell you three categories of people they will directly see police stations were established yes this is correct police officials were appointed this is correct so one and two other category of people they will see this and they have not read this part so they are confused and you know this 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 you are not sure one you are not sure two is there so you stuck between you know uh, b or c you stuck between b or c some people may take a chance okay because uh, if you have 50% accuracy you should be attending in all probability see if you have 50% of getting correct answer you should attempt let's suppose 10 answer 10 question 50% pro 50% probability or 20 question 50% probability that means what 10 will be correct 10 will be wrong as per probability so for 10 correct answer what you get you get uh, uh, 20 marks okay and 10 wrong answers you will lose 6.6 so ultimately what you are getting 14 marks you are getting right so this 14 marks is going to play a big role so you cannot leave these kind of question if you stuck between two option you must go for it now there may be a possibility that entire 20 can go wrong but as per probability as per math this is the situation it can be entire 20 can be correct also and that's your day if entire 20 is wrong that's not your day you have to take the exam again but never leave this case unless and until you are not you are very sure that i have attempted around 60 questions and i have made sure that all the 60 are correct that's not possible and that's never possible never try for that okay so if you stuck between two options without thinking anything you can go for it whatever your mind says just go for it so at least the minimum probability is 50 50 no so you should be getting this or go for it okay so here you may go for it or you will leave it the third possibility you may start thinking right police stations will be established on the basis of what it should be on the basis of area or population more the population more police force is required more police stations is required right that is correct no for example delhi population is so high so more police stations is required so it should be on the basis of population so you without knowing without reading you may make a guess that it should be on the basis of population as per all logic and two i am sure that police officials is there so i'll go with one and two so first category of people went for one and two third category of people went for one and two the correct answer for this question is two only the reason is police stations should be established on the basis of population that is correct and now it is on the basis of population only but that time it was not on the basis of population but it was on the basis of area 
now you should not make it wrong okay so that's the objective that's the reason why i've explained in this way now otherwise uh, no, i don't want to tell that i can directly tell you this area but there is a high chance that you will forget it and later you may make this guess also and you may ignore this fact also and this question was asked before okay so i hope you understood police reforms and you know police stations were established police officials were appointed the head of the police station is known as daroga okay so head of the police stations known as daroga and the super uh, the uh, sub inspector or inspector of police stations right the head of sho so basically the sho now number of police stations together which is connected this forms the circle so this circle and the head of the circle is superintendent of police okay so superintendent of police post was also created so this is about police reform very important even though only two points i've discussed i've made you a very tough question also from here okay see if you want to watch all my videos history in fact almost completed so i am just uh, revisiting it again you can actually after watching these videos you can you can go to my other videos from 1905 to 1947 all these are complete so all those videos are available in the telegram channel this is my telegram channel zia safir this is my instagram id if you have any doubt you can get in touch with me there or if you need to attend my regular classes live classes or mentorship program test series if you need to write with me you can message me you can whatsapp me or telegram this is my number uh, 9899757775 or you can call me in 9790892697 you can whatsapp you can telegram or instagram this is my facebook id also okay or you can get facebook id zias all these are uh, facebook ids okay so uh that's how you can get in touch with me if you need any help with respect to civil service preparation not only history i've done 200 videos more than that in economy i've done on ethics okay and uh, quantitative aptitude videos are there sociology is there if you're optional in sociology i can definitely help you over there in test and every everything okay so all these videos are available in the telegram channel just join there you get everything which is required for your civil service preparation no doubt okay and only the quality content top content nothing junk is there okay so here uh, that's about the police reforms now the third one we need to talk about is judicial reform so see the question they can ask you is there won't be any specific question from uh, police reforms or civil service reform in prelims they can ask you mains you won't get a separate question from that that too mains they can ask you in general what are the reforms of lord cornwallis okay reforms introduced by lord cornwallis or if at all they ask a specific question it could be from this one that we are going to discuss that is judicial reform which which is also known as cornwallis code okay so judicial reform judicial reform cornwallis code so there will be change in structure change in laws also as i have told you just before when we started there is a concept of equality before law now and you know the rule of law actually introduced by lord cornwallis now if you discuss about the structure hierarchy of court at that time firstly uh, the lowest was munsif ki adalat so i'll start from the top so lowest is what i'm writing first okay so munsif ki adalat okay now above munsif in arabic means the man who give justice so munsif ki adalat and above that mun above that court of registrar court of registrar and above that district courts see you don't want to know what kind of cases up to 200 it will be up to 200 rupee it will be here so that things is not required just need to know the structure you don't want to go to that minute details okay so what type of cases in which courts not required to the maximum you need to know civil cases are here and the criminal cases are here i'll tell that so court of registrar district court okay and district courts are further divided into divani courts and circuit courts okay so divani courts are basically for civil cases so the civil issues like uh, marriage adoption property issues etc so this is for civil cases circuit courts are for criminal cases so the civil courts uh, the divani courts were fixed courts and uh, circuit courts were 
moving codes okay so here uh, lord cornwallis actually established four new diwani codes where was that dhaka patna calcutta and murshidabad okay so dhaka patna calcutta murshidabad and later when we discuss about 1833 charter act i'll tell you a provision that in that the four diwani codes which were established by lord cornwallis have to be abolished and instead high court to be set up this was a provision which is going to be coming later okay so we will discuss that provision at that time so here i'm just saying dhaka patna calcutta murshidabad so dhaka patna calcutta murshidabad and you should be knowing this correctly exactly you should know see for example how can i make a question which among the following were the divani courts established by lord cornwallis i change this patna and i put bombay here okay and one two three four and how the options will be a like uh, one two three b will be one three four c will be two three d will be one two three four okay so now here what will happen see the different mindset the way you think is actually uh, murshidabad is not that familiar in case of british uh, this this kinds of establishment so you may go for one two three dhaka bombay calcutta some group of students okay uh, so you may go for one two three you may ignore murshidabad as you are not that sure but bombay calcutta dhaka is sure or sometimes dhaka is also not sure bombay calcutta may be there so some people will go for this two and three okay some people will go for all the four one two three four only and only if you know it is not bombay it is uh, you know patna they will go for this one three four and that's actually the correct answer but there is another way of getting this answer also because lord cornwallis is a governor of bengal so when he established he cannot establish that in bombay that way of logical thinking can get you answer in this case easily but you should be knowing it correctly that is because uh, you know you if you know this correctly then patna it is and not bombay then you can obviously answer so that's why all these minute facts are important when it comes to history okay so four divani courts were established uh, okay so circuit courts i have told you already these were not fixed courts they were moving courts moving in bihar bengal orissa that region completely okay so after this when we see the hierarchy from this where the uh, appeals will go the highest court in case of uh, diwani courts sadar diwani sadar diwani sadar in persian means head okay so high court so circuit courts sadar nizamat okay so sadar diwani and sadar nizamat now when we talk about the laws i have told you they introduced equality before law till then there is no such concept for example in case of uh, with i witness law if you talk about i witness law in front of a magistrate in front of a judge if two people are coming let's say one is upper caste other is lower caste the judge will listen to the upper caste than the lower caste okay similarly upper class and lower class is coming judge will listen to the upper class over the lower class upper when we talk about upper class it is the it is in terms of economic conditions educations occupation etc caste is the uh, hereditary status okay that is based on ritual occupation brahmin kshatriya vaishya shudra so he will listen to the upper caste he will listen to the upper class so upper class means rich people right so in their opinion rich people are rich because they are saying the truth okay but the contrary the opposite is actually true whatever it is and then a muslim or a hindu is coming the judge believe the words of muslim okay so similarly male and female is coming judge will prefer to believe the word of male instead of female now if one fem one male is there one male is actually considered as equal to two female so one male eyewitness statement and two female eyewitness statement is considered equal so if you need to overcome the male statement you need how many not two three female is required okay so basically there is no equality before law now after this 
the convert is introduced equality before law now even a child can also come and give an eyewitness statement so that's a very important and a drastic change in the indian legal system even now also it is based on our constitution it is totally based on when you talk about article 14 15 all these and entire constitution is actually talking about equality before law okay so if you if you see post independence all the case laws property related cases uh, all these fundamental cases reservation related cases all are challenged on this basis of equality before law very important so for the first time equality before law but when we talk about equality before law this is not among all it is among indians at least they introduced equality before law but when it comes to an english and an indian there is no such equality indian and an indian there is an equality doesn't matter upper caste or lower caste or female or male or anything there is an equality but not among indian and english that has to be kept in mind okay secondly uh, apart from equality before law then rule of law rule of law means again a very important concept uh, everything is based on the rules even the governor general also have to work within within the law nobody is above the law the law is supreme that's what rule of law so for everything the law is there rule of law and law of the land is supreme so governor general also have to work within the law that's the concept okay so equality before law and rule of law two most important concepts that you need to discuss if you get a question on uh, judicial reform or convalis court or in general the reforms introduced by convalis even now it is relevant even now our constitution is based on these two pillars these are two important strong pillars of our constitution okay so i hope you understood the three reforms civil service reform judicial reform and uh, police reforms next we will move on to permanent settlement we have already understood a settlement in case of lord warren hastings that was quinquennial settlement we have understood the problems there that the problem was it was totally left out to whom it was left out to the zamindars to decide the revenue that they are going to collect and that created problem because during the bidding process they caught high amount the unrealistic amount to get that zamindari ship and they were never pay that they were never able to realize also that amount okay and the state cannot plan anything according to the revenue expectation so here that system is going to be changed now the revenue is going to be fixed fixed by the government fixed on the basis of a base year that is 1790 1790 is considered as base year and the revenue that you're going to be paying from 73 74 75 78 etc all are fixed all are connected to the revenue that you paid in 1790 that's why the new settlement is known as permanent settlement okay so permanent settlement or zamindari settlement also because zamindars again used to collect tax so here the system is like this it is very highly it is highly controversial and significant also uh, it is a solution to many problems as well uh, because I have told you they are facing problem in uh, collecting revenue, how to collect revenue, from whom to collect revenue, how much to be collected as revenue, when to collect revenue. All these were the questions in the minds of uh, administrators. Okay, so now this is a solution to most of the problems. So, okay, the now here the land revenue will be fixed as I have told you, it will be fixed on the basis of. 1790 so this is the base rate so base year so the land revenue is now fixed on the basis of 1790 that means you will pay 1793 94 95 96 1800 1800 1 1800 2 etc the revenue that you paid in 1790 if you see this from the perspective of the farmer it is actually beneficial because the production keeps on increasing okay production keeps on increasing but revenue is fixed means it is actually good if revenue as per proportion if you need to pay you need to pay more but why still peasants or the farmers were not getting any advantage i'll tell you the reason even though it looks manifestly that the peasants or the actual farmers or the cultivators supposed to benefit but they didn't get any benefit okay so 1790 it is fixed now who will collect revenue zamindars will collect revenue so zamindars will collect from who the actual cultivator who is the peasant so peasant will pay to zamindar zamindar will pay to the state so this is how the structure now why zamindar is now collecting money because zamindar will get a commission so here the commission is uh, this 10 by 11 of the collected amount will go to state and 1 by 11 of the collected amount is for zamindar so collected amount means fixed amount so let's suppose 100 is fixed 
Zemin, the zamindar will get how much? 9. 9 for zamindar and 91 for state. This is how it is divided. Now, if zamindar, there is a uh, there is a condition, if the peasant is not able to pay the tax to the zamindar, this peasant may be evicted by the zamindar and new peasant will be coming, P1. Or if this P1 is not able to pay, P2 will come. Like that, he can change the peasants. Same law is applicable in case of zamindar also, which was introduced in 1794, known as sunset law so under sunset law 1794 if the zamindar failed to pay the money the tax to the state before the sunset which is fixed the zamindar will be evicted and the zamindarship will be given to some other person so instead of this place another zamindar can come z1 z2 like that different zamindars can come here under sunset law now where it is implemented it is actually implemented in bengal bihar oriza right so Bengal, Bihar, Orissa, parts of Tamil Nadu, parts of Tamil Nadu and Benares. What percentage of India it was implemented? 19 percentage of British India. So when we talk about British India, if this is total India, British India is where they have total control in, right? Like Bengal, uh, Bombay, Madras. So out of which the entire British India, 19 percent is discovered. So when we later talk about uh, Rottweil settlement, that was maximum, that is 51 percent is Mahalwari settlement, that is 30 percent is. So this is 19 percent of British India. Okay. So the main concepts here is uh, how the system is. This is a system. Peasant will pay the tax to the zamindar. Zamindar will pay to the state. It is fixed on the basis of 1790. And this commission you need to know 1 by 11 to zamindar, 10 by 11 to state. Sunset law you need to know. Zamindar's power to evict the peasant you need to know. And then where it is implemented you need to know. What percentage area you need to know. So this is about the factual side. Now let's look into the consequences. Now when it comes to the mains exam, the consequences is more important, right? See, uh, first of all, if you see the structure, state, and here zamindar, so here peasant. So if the peasant is not able to pay, what will happen? This lead to the eviction of peasant, right? So eviction of peasant, so the new peasant will come. That means eviction of peasant, uh, that means he lose the land. So because of high rate of taxation, he may not be able to pay tax. So he lose the land and he become rural landless labor. He have to work on some other's land. So one impact is rural landless labors. Other general one that you can say is even though the tax is fixed on the base of 70-90, that in itself is so high. Like around 60-70 percentage of total output it is coming. Remember when we talk about total output, uh, it also include the inputs as well, right? So if you add the input cost, it comes around 80 to 90 percentage of the produce. So the peasants hardly getting 10 to 20 percentage. Okay, so maximum amount they are supposed to pay as tax and that's a big problem. So that is one thing. So you can write the first impact or the high rate of high rate of taxation. So rural landless labor because because of high rate of taxation they were unable to pay tax and they will be evicted by the peasants. Now you see because of this high rate of taxation and the compulsion to pay taxes from the uh, zamindar side to the peasants, uh, the peasant they don't want to leave the land. So what they do is they try to approach people to borrow money. So now money lenders also started coming to this area because they have seen a, a super huge scope here so that they can lend and they can take very high interest. Okay. So money lenders are emerged. Money lenders emerged and they started charging very high rate of interest. So that led to what? That led to indebtedness. Okay. So that led to indebtedness. Rural indebtedness bondage. Okay. So all these you can write here. These are impact. Then uh, this also led to you know uh, many people are now coming. Many people are working. Let's suppose uh, two people are supposed to work here in this land. So the output that they are producing. Now what will happen? More people are working. Let's say five people are working. The same output output will be there because same land output remain the same. So the marginal productivity of this three people are actually zero. That is an economic concept. So this is disguised unemployment, right? 
because marginal productivity is this three people zero so uh, there is a situation of unemployment okay so unemployment poverty all these are now connected now more than this two specific criticism which is related to this settlement is with respect to zamindars okay so this zamindars you know when this person is failing to pay tax to the state he will be evicted so a new zamindar will come z1 he may not be from the rural area he may be from an urban area but he is coming here aspiring to become zamindar by looking for an opportunity of that commission he may be a merchant he may be a businessman he is looking for that nine percent commission so he don't have any connection with the rural area he may not even come to rural area also he may appoint some other person to collect tax uh, that lead to absentee landlordism a typical feature of uh, permanent settlement absentee landlordism very important point without writing this your answer is not complete you cannot afford to miss this even if you miss all these no problem you need to write this because this is specific to uh, you know zamindari settlement this will not be there in mahalwari or riotwari this situation will not come apart from this i have told you this zamindar may appoint another person zamindar too to collect revenue because he is an urban merchant he may be busy with some other activity so let's say out of nine he is getting he promised that i'll pay you four i'll take five this person may also appoint another person by saying that i'll pay you two this person may appoint uh, zamindar four by saying i will give you one this person will again say zamindar five i'll give you 50 paisa like this it will go so this result into chain of intermediaries chain of intermediaries now chain of intermediaries means this lead to exploitation of the peasants so because he is getting very 50 paisa only so if he need to get more what he need to do he need to collect more even though the state is asking you to let's suppose state is asking you to collect 100 rupee what you will do you will collect more than that because if you collect 100 rupee the first person you get nine and it will be divided right so let's suppose state is asking you to collect 100 they will collect 200 so state is asking you to collect 100 so how much you need to give to state 91 now you collected 200 how much you need to give to state you can give to state 91 only if you give anything more that is illegal you can't do that so rest of the 109 who's getting these people are dividing among themselves so here who's benefiting here the middle men is benefiting the zamindars are benefiting neither the state nor the peasants are benefiting that's actually the problem even though it is fixed on the base of 1790 why the peasants did not get the benefit this is the reason this chain of intermediaries started exploiting the peasants so i hope you understood the session so we talked about police reforms civil service reform uh, judicial reform permanent settlement in the coming session i'll talk about uh, riotwari settlement and mahalwari settlement also so i hope you understood we'll stop here if you have any doubt you can get in touch with me uh, this is my instagram id you can join the telegram channel for all my videos this is my facebook id also you can get in touch with me this is my number 9790892697 not only for history any help related to civil service preparation okay so see you guys thank you